Hey, welcome back to After the Episode, brought to you by Line Cutters, the adjustable ring that cuts fish in line. Hey, welcome back to After the Episode. I'm Ty. This is my co-host and neighbor. Neighbor. <laughs> neighbor. Yeah, I'm a neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa. We're here to talk to y'all about uh, Venice. So, really what I want the focus to be on this is how we fish dirty water, marsh water. Yeah. Be it East Texas or Louisiana or Mississippi. Pascagoula or southern Alabama or even some places in Pensacola up in the marshes the north I-10 We have to fish dirty water. Yeah, so my go-to is gulp. Tactics change. Yeah, Teresa likes gulp. In muddy water. Bing! Gulp. Mm-hmm. Why do you like gulp when the water's dirty? Um, well, like I, I use the jerk shad. You use jerk shad, jerk shad soft plastics anyway. So when I use my gulp jerk shad, it has a stink to it. So... I'm using the same kind of movement you're using, but it's got a little bit of stink to it, and that helps in muddy water. I think the key there she just think, she just said is smell. When you're dealing with muddy water, the fish rely heavily on their sense of smell and on their sense of feel. Mm-hmm. So that's why we go to baits that move a lot of water and baits that stink more than normal. Yeah, you want some vibration in the water. Because their visibility is limited, so they rely on other things like smell and scent. Scent and uh, smell is movement. Scent. <laughs> scent, smell. Scent and motion. Thing. Scent and motion. Yeah. And if you, if, if you notice, like in Louisiana, the, the, the Cajun popping cork, I mean, that's kind of spread, but that originated there because the water's muddy. It makes a lot of racket, calls them in, they smell the, the goat. Wham, there are lots of deadly combination. Like what were y'all using? Paddle tails? Big paddle, paddle tails. Paddle. Wobble, 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 wobble. And another thing with dirty water is we like to contrast the water. So you'll notice a lot of people in places like East Texas, Mississippi, Louisiana, they'll use black. They'll use purple. Purple, yeah. Motor right. oil. Purple. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they always contrast that with a chartreuse tail. Chartreuse, actually, even though it's a lighter color, um, really contrast dirty water well. So you'll see a lot of people using that gulp curly tail shrimp as we did in this video in muddy places, muddy marsh. Yeah, see Brian, he uses the popping cork. He uses the popping cork. Makes a lot of racket. And, and he has a gulp on the Part end. two, he used the curly tail gulp and chartreuse. Mm-hmm. He uses the gulp and a voodoo shrimp. Yeah. On the popping cork. So if you live in one of the in the muddier marshy areas, comment below and let us know what your favorite soft plastic is. Wherever it is you live, let us know where you live and what you're throwing. This can help out everybody. Of course, walking the dog, we, we love it. Any dirty or clean water works really well in dirty water because it makes a lot of racket. But uh, in, the, in the wintertime, you got to slow things down. The fish are slower. So we go to contrasting colors with stink and motion. Mm-hmm. Right, Teresa? Yep. We had a fun time mothershipping with Brian Sherman mm-hmm. um, the first day. Yeah, y'all, we mothershipped the first day. We tried to mothership the second day. Chip, y'all ever had a need to mothership? Uh, he really wanted to take us some spots that were far back on the first day, so it was just, you know, you're running 30 minutes for 30 minutes at, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. So There's just so much water down there. Yeah, there's so much water to cover. The second day, we actually put it on the side of the road, uh, like we normally would. We caught a ton of redfish. And we caught a ton of redfish. If you haven't I seen part home. two, check out part two. <laughs> Teresa stayed home. That's the day I shouldn't have stayed, but whatever. Yeah, she wore cold. herself out on the cold. Yeah, it was a little cold. Actually, day two was warmer. She missed out, but we had a great time. We had Dean with us, too. Yes. He makes the jigs here in Pensacola. He never fished outside of the state of Florida, mm-hmm. so he was all excited. He just had a blast. It was fun to watch him just being in new territory catching new fish yeah it was kind of they were both kind of bad days <laughs> and we were telling for south louisiana it was bad. bad day and he was like this is a good day what are you talking about yeah it, it was for south louisiana it wasn't that great of, of a weekend we still of course we still caught a lot of fish yeah and um we ate some good food oh yeah mm-hmm. we were in the kaku wahoo and the kaku kahuna mm-hmm. paddleboard yeah uh which was new for us um, they did well in that environment. They're pretty tough, so I think they do well with oyster reefs and stuff, which there's plenty of in South Louisiana. Oh, yeah. And we were throwing our McCain rods, and I'm, I'm going to keep looking over here because I'm watching the video. We were throwing the McCain rods, 
Uh, we were throwing 15, 20 pound braid, pins. I mean, just pretty much a standard flats inshore setup. Seven foot rods. Something you were using this time around, something you never use. No electronics. Anti-electronic tie had a, a micro power pole. Yeah. How, did that, how does that help you out? Brian, Brian has a power pole and he offered it to me. He said, well, sure, let's go ahead and try it out. Um, if there's not a lot of wind, it's really Cadillac, you know, because you just have it around your neck and you just, and it just goes down and you just stop. If the, I tend to fish into the wind, so when the wind was blowing and I would drop the power pole, I would do this. <laughs> Spin around. Boy, I get mad. I'm like, all that money back there and I'm spinning around? Because, you know, just a Yak Attack parking pole through a, um, what do you call it? Scupper hole? No. Through the, um, anchor trolley? Anchor trolley. <laughs> The parking pole through an anchor trolley, you can send that sucker to the front or the back, and you can position the boat anywhere you want it. I can keep it into the wind, I can send it up front and stay in the wind. And that's, you know, we're talking a fraction of the price of power pole. But it, the power pole is a luxury item, especially in light winds. Parking pole broomstick will work good too. The water yeah. is so soft. We ran a lot the first day, it was cold, brutal conditions, but we prevailed. And we got rewarded with some pole boys. I got me an oyster pole boy. Teresa, what do you eat? You shrimp, a shrimp, shrimp basket. I have a shrimp, shrimp basket. basket over there at Crawl Gators, right uh -huh. there at the Venice Lounge. Ooh, some good food. Mm, 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 That's mm. my nickname for Teresa. Lunchbox. Shrimp basket. <laughs> he comes up with all kinds of silly nicknames. <laughs> yeah, if you get a chance to go fishing with uh, with Brian Sherman, kayakvenicela.com. He's Hit been doing up. it for seven years. He's done a good there. while down there. He's he, he's a lot of people that fish with him every year. And uh, he can put you on them. He knows where they're at. Yeah. A lot so, yeah. of fun. It is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. He's got great accommodations, as you saw in the beginning of the first one. Mm -hmm. Had a little bunkhouse. He's got other places that he can put you up as well. Mm -hmm. If you watch Voodoo in Venice, part one and two, you saw some of the other accommodations he's got. But, uh, yeah, just, just an amazing bucket list kind of place to go. So the huge question on these two episodes is, is mother shipping cheating? Holy cow. There are some people out there that get really angry when they see, they say you're cheating and it's not kayaking. Hmm. <laughs> Somebody said it the best though. Somebody said I'm a fisherman first and I just do what it takes to get to the fish. That's what I think. You know? Yeah. And that's kind of the way I feel. I, I'm not in a kayak because I don't want to have a boat. I've had eight boats. I'm in a kayak because it's the best way to fish. Sometimes somebody else has got a boat, like Brian sees, and they can take you across somewhere where you couldn't have got to. Chasing the bullets. In your kayak. Yeah. Well, let's go. That's the way I feel about it. Being creative with it, you know. Yeah. But I'm always going to be in that kayak. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I'm wrapping it up here, man. <laughs> Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you next time right here on Line Cutters after the episode.